Hello and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany and I have some very exciting news. I am officially hosting my first doll giveaway. This is going to be celebrating the 15k subscribers here on YouTube and I'm so close to the number right now. I can taste it. I'm thankful for all the support over here on YouTube and this is my way of saying thank you. But not only am I doing a giveaway here on YouTube, I'm also doing a giveaway for my supporters over on Patreon. I've made this a three doll collection, so this is going to be one for the YouTube giveaway, one for the Patreon giveaway, and one that's going to go up on my Etsy shop. If you would like to be entered into the contest here on YouTube, remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. For further details, please check out the description box below on all of the rules. And if you're interested in the Patreon giveaway, just head on over there. There's a link down below. All of my Patreon supporters, no matter what tier they're in, will be entered into that drawing. Enough chatting about the giveaway, so let's get on to the actual planning of the Rosaceae Fairy Collection. The concept behind these dolls revolved around these beautiful silk roses that I found at the craft store. I planned to make some skirts out of the rose petals and I was going to use their leaves to make a woodland cropped lace up top. I wanted them to have horned headdresses that were adorned with flowers because I didn't want them to actually have horns but I wanted that to be part of their character aesthetic. And I wanted wings that were more geared towards ethereal and fantasy rather than based in real life. But most importantly, I wanted each doll to have their own color story and to have their own unique attributes, however fit together as a cohesive collection. Now on to the doll preparation. For my base dolls, I've chosen Gigi Grant, Viberine, and Jennifer. These all have very interesting body sculpts and I felt like this was a perfect opportunity to use up some of these unique ones from my stock box. It's also really nice that all of these dolls already have pointy ears like I imagine fairies do. The first thing I tackle is removing the doll's hair. I take and shave it all down to a nice stubble with my electric razor. Next, I fully submerge the head in boiling hot water for several minutes until the vinyl gets nice and squishy. Since I'm doing three dolls at once, I'm having to play a little bit of doll yoga to make them all fit in the cup. Once it's had time to soften, I pull it out of the water and then I pop the head off. The water and the doll is very hot, so I'm making sure to protect my hand with a cloth. Viperine also has these snakes on the back of her head to contend with, so while the vinyl is still hot, I'm going to attempt to pull these off. I do wind up having to use my X-Acto blade to get it started just a bit before it'll come off easily, but with a little bit of elbow grease and persistence, they come right off. To remove the remaining stubble, I'm going to take my flathead screwdriver and I'm going to scrape it around on the inside of the head. This is going to pull the plugs out of their holes and it's also going to loosen up that glue that's inside. Once it's completely loosened up, I can take my needle nose pliers and pull out all the gunky, nasty hair. I somehow managed to pick three dolls that all had nasty, gluey gunk inside of them. Yuck. Using 100% acetone, I remove all of the factory paint. In preparation for her new hair, her scalp gets a coat of green paint. I am going to apologize for the lack of footage showing me prepping my yarn. I unfortunately did this while I was at the pool supervising my daughter. Sorry! If you are interested, I did the pulled yarn method and I've shown this in a bunch of videos, so I'll leave a couple of links in the description box. I'm going to first reroute all the way around the hairline and the part line. Since yarn is so fluffy, I'm only doing every other hole in the hairline. To address the issue of the snake hole, I'm going to be rooting hair along the outside edge of that hole. This way it won't be seen and it'll be covered up with the hair. My plan is to have this be a combination of plugs and wefts, so the hole will even get further covered with the wefts when they get glued in later. For the part line, I'm going to be plunging down into the center holes, and I'm taking and separating the yarn into the left and right side to form a nice neat part. Now I'm finished with the rereading portion of this, so I'm going to be securing those plugs in place. I'm using some liquid fusion glue and squeezing some down into the head. Remember, don't use too much because this can seep back through the holes if you're not careful. I use my silicone tool to spread the glue out, making sure to touch all of those plugs. Now to prep some wefts, and I'm sorry this is not the green hair. I forgot to record the green hair, but this is the blonde for a different fairy. I've taken my pulled yarn and I'm taking small sections and I'm laying them out here so that they're a nice thin layer. And then I'm going to cover the tops with a little bit of glue, making sure to try to keep my glue line pretty neat and even. That gets set aside to dry. Here is this absolutely beautiful silk rose that I was telling you about. It has an insane amount of detail and color variations to it. It's just gorgeous. I start out by just taking this thing apart so I can see all of the pieces and figure out what I want to use.
My original plan was to take the flower petals and layer them up into a fluffy little skirt. However, this looked like absolute garbage. I hated it. So I went back to the drawing board. I start off just by draping the petals and the leaves across the body, just seeing how they're going to lay and see what speaks to me. I figured this time I would try to let the design develop organically since I'm working with the organic shapes and the material that is imitating organic material. When I decide I like something, I just begin to pin it in place until I'm ready to finalize it. Once I decide, yes, this is my design, this is what I want to go with, I begin to secure everything in place permanently. And I'm using some hot glue and I'm just tacking down those petals and leaves in place. I tried to keep the sewing to a minimum on this project and the small amount of sewing that there is is all hand sewn. So anyone who is just not a sewer or really just hates sewing can see some other options for making clothes for dolls. I draped the assembled dress onto my mannequin and I'm marking where I'm going to be putting snap buttons. I then flip her over and mark and pin where I'm going to be putting the dart so that it's a little bit more form fitting in the top. This is something you could skip but it is going to cause some gaping and bagginess there and I wanted mine to be nice sleek and tight. I mark the darts with my fabric pins so that I can see them just a little bit better while I'm sewing. Now I can get started with the sewing. And I'm doing a running stitch one direction and then coming back and securing it again in the opposite direction, then tying it off. For the last bit of hand sewing, I'm sewing on a snap button. Like I said, it's only a small amount of sewing and so you can totally do this. I know you see the brown leather trim right there, but ignore it for right now because I did pull that off because I didn't like it and came up with a better idea. The back of the dress wasn't quite as tight as I wanted, so to help with that, I'm going to be gluing on these hemp cords to use as ties. For the shoulder strap, I'm taking a bit of ribbon and I'm gluing that onto the top and then measuring it down to where it needs to meet on the back and gluing that in place. I clip off the excess and heat seal the ends of the ribbon. Now for my favorite part, decorating. I'm taking some gem tack glue and I'm smearing it on just in random places and applying some iridescent nail art caviar. I'm using various sizes so that there's some visual interest and texture to the dress. I put a little tray under the dress to catch the spill away, but it doesn't work perfectly and nail caviar goes everywhere and it's all over my workspace the entire time I worked on this project. Now on to the wings. I've taken and printed my wing design out onto some transparency film. And I'll leave a link to the shop that sells these PDF wing files. They have lots of great designs to choose from and they're really gorgeous. I cut the wing in diamond clays, which is a dimensional glue. And then I begin to push it and pull it around with my silicone tool making ripples and ridges. I let this dry and then I tackle the back as well. I wish I could say I figured this technique out on my own because it's absolutely gorgeous. But I saw this on YouTube by another artist named Kelly Boo and I'll link her channel in the description box. Her channel tends to focus around just sewing and making accessories for the American Girl size dolls. Now you can see the glue is dried and it's left behind this beautiful glass-like rippled effect in the wings. Before I can move on any further, I do need to get these cut out. Before I glue on the wire frame for the wings, I wanted to test out a few different kinds of glues to see which one had the best hold. Diamond glaze pulled pretty much right up, so I wasn't going to use that, and it did seem that the Gem Tack with Liquid Fusion had better hold, so I'm going to use one of those. 
I wound up going the gem tack route. It's what I'm familiar with and what I tend to use with my Angelina film wings as well. I take 26 gauge wire and I'm matching up the shape to the top of the wing. I coat the wire in gem tag glue and then I apply it to the wing and let it sit and dry. I leave a long tail of wire at the base of the wing so that I have something to make attachments with later. Once the gem tag glue has had a chance to dry, I reinforce this attachment further with a layer of diamond glaze. Now with the glue dried, I can start matching up my wings. The wings are composed of two, so a larger and a smaller, and I take the larger and the smaller of the same size and twist their wires together. I'm going to be attaching these to magnets, and I'm taking those wires that I just twisted together, and I'm going to be sliding them down through this donut magnet. I slide them through the center hole, then wrap it back around and through so that I get a good tight hold. When I have both wings in place, I secure it with a bit of epoxy glue and then I cover it with some faux fur so that you don't see the ugly magnet. One thing that is important to remember when you're working with magnets is, although it may be tempting to use, avoid hot glue. Hot glue can demagnetize your magnets. Now to decorate those wings, I'm going to use some gem tack glue and applying some nail caviar. Each of the wing sets are designed slightly differently with one having just the nail caviar, one having nail caviar and some glitter, and one just having rhinestones. Now for the corresponding attachment on the doll. I start and I've sketched out the shape of the magnet and I'm going to drill that hole out and I'm careful not to drill all the way through and cut through the front of the doll. Once I have my hole big enough to fit the magnet, you've noticed that there's just a huge void. So I'm going to fill that with some aluminum foil so that the magnet has a place to rest. I make sure to mark the magnet with the correct direction that it needs to face and glue it in place with some epoxy glue. Now for her headdress. I've modeled this and gotten it printed out on my Elegoo Mars 3 resin printer. I've made it just slightly bigger than what her head size actually is so that she has room for her hair. I've made this 3D file free for all of my patron supporters, and my Dynamite tier patrons will be receiving 3D printed versions of this for their July award. I had tiny holes, one on each side, and this is going to allow for a straight pin to go through and hold these in place on the doll's head. I prepped these with a layer of spray primer followed up by some brown metallic spray paint. I dry brushed the high points with a metallic gold. Once the paint has had a chance to dry, I can start gluing on all of my decorations. I'm using paper roses and different floral pieces, as well as some gemstones too. I wanted to say a huge thank you to all of my friends over on Patreon. I can't thank you enough for all of your belief in me and your continuous support. I'm super excited about hosting this giveaway with you guys, and I can't wait. Manders, Thurry, Amber S, Angel Book Walter, Angelica, Dollicious, Jennifer Medina, Camille, Kitsy, Stormcrow Studios, Donna Magana, Bex Mini Studio, OOAK Magpie, Angela Hendrickson. Again, thank you guys so much. If you're interested in supporting me there, please check out the link in the description box below. My Patreon supporters get behind the scenes, in progress content, 3D printing files, exclusive voting rights, clothing patterns, and even 3D printed accessories on higher tiers.
So here are all the supplies that I've used on the face up and you'll notice there's a lot of colors here because this is the colors that I used on the face ups of all of the dolls, not just this one. There's going to be some pictured here that you don't see used in this particular face up. But as always, there's a full list in the description box if you're curious about any of these products. I've prepped my doll with three coats of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat and I wait 30 minutes in between each layer before applying the next. I've masked her hair away to help protect it because the Mr. Super Clear will leave a dusting of residue in her hair if I don't. I start the face up by sketching in her eye shape first and then I match those up and make sure that they're symmetrical. I will flip my doll's head upside down and this will help me check to see if they're uniform. When the face is right side up, it is harder to see the differences in symmetry, but turning the head upside down causes the brain to have a harder time with perception and recognition of facial features so that it's looking at the lines as a whole rather than at the face. I use my brown watercolor pencil to darken up some of the deeper creases. I blush rose tones on the apples of her cheeks, forehead, ears, tip of the nose, and her lips. Now I begin the contouring of the face and I'm just focusing on any of the areas that are naturally more in shadow. I darken up her eyeliner because the line has kind of gotten lost with all of the application of pastels and then I fill in the scleras. Then I can start on layer two. On layer two I start by sketching in her eyebrow shape with some pastels and then I refine that with my eraser. I sketch in her iris and her pupil placement and once I'm happy I block in the colors. Using a very sharp pencil, I begin to add in individual hairs to her eyebrows. I work in small, quick flicks to give the appearance of natural hair growth. I define the areas of the tear duct and the waterline. Before I start darkening up her eyeshadow even further, I'm going to apply a layer of colorless blender and this will allow the eyeshadow to blend more easily. I darken the area under the eyelid to ask us to cast shadow from the eyelashes. Then I start highlighting the high points of the face. Using a very sharp brown watercolor pencil, I begin to sketch in her facial markings. When I'm happy with her facial markings, I give her another coat of Mr. Super Clear and get started on layer 3. On the start of this fresh layer, I begin with some detailing to her eyes. I sketch in her eyelashes with a very sharp black watercolor pencil, and this is the first time I've tried to do downturned lashes, and I think they turned out rather well. Using my Derwent Ink Tense watercolor pencil in black, I begin to darken up the lash line and the base of the lashes. I paint in her catch lights and highlights to the waterline with white gouache.
The final thing I do before sealing is paint on her facial markings with gold gilding paint. After that, her face up's done, and all that I need to do is seal her with three coats of Mr. Super Clear. This is going to seal in our work and make sure that there's no chance of smudging or ruining the paint job. I'm really happy with how she turned out, and I'm beginning to think that Viperine may be my new favorite mold. The last thing our fairy needs is the rest of her hair. I have taken those wefts that we prepared earlier and I'm going to be laying these in just in rows all the way up the back of the head. And you can see this nicely covers up that area where she had her snakes. I measure out my weft and then apply some glue to the back of it and pop it onto the head. And I just do these in rows all the way up until I'm completely filled her head in. Finally, to style that hair, I'm taking my metal chopstick and wrapping their hair around it and then hitting it with my flat iron. And with that, our fairy girl is done. Stay tuned to the end for some reveal photos as well as photos of the other fairies of this collection. I will be releasing videos of those later on, so be on the lookout for those too. Be sure to read the rules down below for the giveaway and make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on this video so that you're entered in to win. Thank you guys so much for watching and all of your support. Remember, always be creating.